Oilers tie the Western Conference final with a shocking game four. And before I give the rundown and the, the, the blow by blow, I just want to say that I feel every game of this series has either been a classic or a stupid classic. <laughs> and I fucking love that for my guys. I don't know. I think I prefer the stupid classics. I think we definitely prefer the stupid We're classics. We're calling last night a, st a stupid classic, right? Absolutely a stupid classic. But last night was also a classic. It could be a stupid. I think the two things can be true at the same time. Sean, are we getting classic uh, or stupid classic? I was going to say, I think it's got to be stupid classic because I feel like a classic requires both teams to be awesome the whole time. Like it's got to be. And last like night, as a handsome man said on Twitter following the game, last night was a complete 52 minute effort from the Oilers. <laughs> they were so. Impressive. Uh, a little in case you also. I think when Ryan McLeod scores, it automatically qualifies as a stupid, stupid classic. classic. Yeah. All right. So the Stars score on the first shot of the game, 58 seconds in. They go up two nothing less than five minutes later on a wide shot that goes off. Yes, Darnell Nurse's booty cheeks and into the net. Then after about three or four minutes of I think both teams being like shocked at what had happened. I don't think either team expected like whoa we're five minutes into the game. And it's 2 nothing stars. This was the must-win game for Edmonton. What's going on? I don't think either team expected it to be there. The Oilers score two goals in two minutes and 40 seconds. Stars finish the first period on their heels. Oilers get a shorthanded goal from Matthias Yanmark in the second period, followed shortly by Leon Dreisaitl goal. And that pretty much puts it away. Chris Tanev leaves the game in the second period. I wouldn't Try say that put it away, but, you know, Ultimate, well, well, like, ultimately, yeah, yes. you're right. All yeah. said and done, the, the, I mean, the, the did, you, goal did anybody away. feel like that game was over at that point? No, no not way. what I was saying. Yeah. I was saying that they, that it scores another goal and uh, Dallas doesn't score another goal right. the rest of the game. Chris Tanev leaves in the second period, doesn't return, and the Oilers close it out on a uh, Matthias Ekholm empty netter, five two, the final. And Wayne Gretzky had a quote in the second period. Quote, the only thing that you can figure out about this series is that you can't figure it out. Peter, there have been two straight games where a team has jumped out to a 2 nothing lead in the first and then given up at least three straight goals and lost. So I think the, the great one hit the nail on the head there. Yeah, I, I, I tweeted uh, 2 nothing leads in the series, and it's the, uh, the Simpsons kid chuckles, I'm in danger. Because that, you don't know I mean, that kid's name? Uh, it's, isn't it uh, Ralph Wiggum? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'm not a Simpsons guy. Mm. I don't know if you know this. Sean, you a Simpsons head? Nope. Pete, Do you watch you any Simpsons? Nope. Really? I don't know if I have ever watched a full episode of The Simpsons. Do you know that Sabrina Carpenter's aunt is Nancy Cartwright? Uh, not. You know who yeah, Nancy she's Cartwright is? Ne Nepo baby. She does voices the on The Simpsons. Yeah, does all the voices. Does uh, Bart oh, Simpson. Yeah. That's how uh, Sabrina Carpenter got her, her like, her, she, Got her album. Hey, she's a nepo niece. <laughs> yes. She's a nepo niece. N Nancy Cartwright is going around Holly Weird being like, I have a really short niece. <laughs> I don't know like if it exists anymore. You ever go to the Simpsons ride at Universal in Florida? I did, yeah. Coolest thing of all it's time. It's a cool ride. It yeah. was awesome. Universal the sucks, sphere before though. the sphere. What? Universal sucks. Oh, that's such a Universal sucks. It's Harry take. Potter and it's like nothing else. Harry Potter is enough, first yeah, off. I mean, I agree. That's the only reason I went to Universal, but man. That's a bad take. A Universal take. seems like a relic. It's not It's not Disney, but it's it's an awesome theme park. I've never been. Don't care. I go to Disney, and I go on the rock and roller coaster, and then I walk around Epcot, and I get the Disney's whatever the half of eyes they have. Uh, Disney is oh, the, the I mean, catch me doing a Dole Whip. Catch a Dole me. Whip. Got to drink around the world at Dole Epcot Whips all all the time. Dole whips go crazy. Uh, this, by the way, was Pete's answer to his thoughts on the game and the series. <laughs> so I don't know if, as a star man, you are filibustering. No, it's so, my uh, kind of filibuster. It's good filibuster. <laughs> it was a good filibuster. But was, ins give it to me. Insert a grab ass. Um, I, I think that was perfectly the game that the Oilers needed uh, in that spot. I don't know how sustainable it's going to be. Like I don't know. Do they run back? Ryan McLeod and Corey Perry on Leon Drysaddle's wing. Like, they had a great game, but I don't know if I want that if, if I'm an oil man. Do you want that as an oil man moving forward? I'm loving the amount of deflecting that Pete is doing right now. But sure, let's talk about Chris no, Knobloch. No, no, no. He takes three guys out of his lineup, puts in two players who did not play the previous game as top six forwards riding shotgun with Leon motherfucking Dreisaitl, 
who, by the way, kind of wants to get going himself, doesn't have a point in the last two games, and he has Ryan McLeod and Corey Perry as his wings. Ryan McLeod, who, who of zero points in 14 games heading into that game last night. Not much of an impact player outside of the penalty kill this postseason. Yeah. And he and ends up getting top six minutes, getting to play alongside Leon Dreisaitl. Big surprise for all of us. He also puts in Philip Broberg, a young AHL question mark on the back end. And when they fell down to nothing, I was like, oh boy, we are entering Chris Knobloch. What the fuck were you doing? You stupid piece of shit Seinfeld clip watch. But everything this guy is doing somehow turns to gold. He... The, the real balls going back to Stu Skinner in what it had been game six. Oh, I was going to say, yeah, yeah. In, yeah. in the second round, right? Goes back to it, knowing, as we had said, even if they got out of the, the second round with, uh, with, with Pickard. Calvin Pickard as their backup, as their starting goalie, they were going to have to start Stu in game one against the Stars because the only shot you have is if you also have good goaltending. He says, fuck it. I'm going to try to get out of this series, giving Stu a little bit of runway here. It works out. Skinner is good the final two games of the series. And now, after you have lightly, lightly, lightly outplayed your opponent and are down 2-1, you make these crazy changes to your roster, none of which, if we kicked around... And we were saying, like, what we do you do with cooked. the lineup? Like, none of us would have suggested, oh, you know what you got to do? is You got to put Corey Perry on the second line. <laughs> yeah, and if we did suggest that, we would have been fucking laughed out of the building. And if one of us said, what about Philip Broberg? First <laughs> round pick? The guy who hasn't played since April 18th? We would have been called stupid hot takey. We would have been J.J. Reddick by anybody who knew hockey. You say, like, you're not just going, oh, why? Because he's a first round pick. You're going to put him back there. Everything. Philip Broberg had a good game last night. Ryan McLeod scored. I kid you not, a goal last night. I know, crazy. And like that goal was essentially the well, the primary assist came from Corey Perry. So like Leon Drysaddle barely factored into that goal. Like those guys made the impact, not not like riding Leon's coattails. So now I ask this question, and I think I've asked it a couple of points throughout this series. What happened to the Stars being the deeper team? Why I still, are I still think they're the deeper team? Why isn't it showing up? It's a good. That's a good question. I, my, I'm not concerned about the stars' depth. I'm not concerned about the stars' forward. You ask my opinion or where I stand on the stars and my concern level. The only reason that I'm a little bit concerned, if I'm a Dallas person right now, which I famously am, I'm a star man. The Chris Tanev injury, yeah. like the Chris Tanev injury, him getting uh, he took a uh, Evander Kane shot off the yeah. foot. Was hobbled in the second period, uh, did, tried to skate it off, had a couple short shifts, then headed to the locker room, did not return. That would very much concern me. He is an elite defensive defenseman and a really integral part of that team. Fourth on the Stars in time on ice this postseason. Second on the Stars in shorthanded time on ice this postseason. They are in big trouble without him. Sean was saying earlier in the series, man, Edmonton could really use a Chris Tanev. There could be times coming up where we say, man, Stars could really use a Chris Tanev. To go back to the depth thing, Oilers have more goal scorers this this round than the Stars do. I would have been stunned if you told me that. Yeah, I mean, so the Stars, I think they have better players down their lineup. Some of them aren't showing up, but, which is a problem. Like, you need more from Matt Duchesne, obviously. Uh, you need more from Logan Stank Stankoven. Like that line sucked last night. Correct. Duchesne, Stankoven, and uh, why am I forgetting who's on it? I, I put it in there. Uh, oh, Pavelski. Pavelski is. Oh, no, I'm sorry. No, Marshman, uh, Duchesne, Pavelski. But I will was say bad. Pavelski has been so, so bad. Kind of useless. So useless. So Stankoven with Ben and Johnson was kind of fine last night. Jamie Ben, but you was, want more Jamie, of Jamie Ben was very good last night. Do you I know, know Jamie Ben was was very noticeable? Connor McDavid leads the series famously in points. Uh, do you know who is second in points this series? No. Take a guess. It's somebody that we just said. Jamie Ben. 
No, not Jamie Benn, because Jamie Benn is tied for first in really? points. Yes. Wow. It was a little trickeration. Jamie Benn has as many points as, as seven. They both have seven, and I didn't even need to look. I'm so like, six Jamie Benn doesn't have real points. Yeah, he has six assists, and I'm sure half of them are secondary. But still, Jamie Benn, end of his contract, probably end of the line, maybe. No, no way. You don't think so? No. No, I mean, Jamie Benn is still a very good player. How much did but like... Mm, I don't know. I think he's. I, I think he's. He still, might be like year to year kind of deal. I think. He, okay. I think he keeps playing. I guess the end of the line was a little dramatic. I think starts very dramatic. Bad. Like Jamie Ben, very good player. I wouldn't be surprised if he had no interest in leaving Dallas and just kind of did those like year to year, uh, one year deals and then just kind of playing it by year. On McDavid, I mentioned McDavid leading the series in points. A question I have is. Why is Connor McDavid so much better in this series against the Stars than he was in the second round against the Canucks where we were speculating that he was injured? We were asking all sorts of questions about him. Biz had come on with us and he said, Rick Tockett, I think, feels he's got some kind of solution to uh, to Connor McDavid. But Stars and Canucks, very comparable teams defensively and goaltending-wise this year, similar, yet... In the second round, we think Oilers are toast because something's wrong with Connor McDavid. And now he's po possibly, probably the best player against the Stars, who we thought was the best team in the NHL. Yeah, I mean, it, it could be a case of him healing up a little bit like that. I, I still don't think that McDavid has looked 100% in this series. I thought he looked really good last night in game four. Last two games. Last, last two games, even... Yeah, I I just think that there are, there are moments when you look at Connor McDavid's game and uh you know even still there's a little bit of hesitancy to to his game um where if he's 100% I think that he converts on some chances. He and had another chance last night. I know that everyone's all horny about the Jake Ottinger stick, but in the first period where he, he stick handled yeah, he gave the extra stick handle. Like that's what I'm saying. Like those What are you kind, doing? I think that's that's what I look at and say I don't know if he's 100 percent because there's been a few times it, over the past week or so where he's looked like he's had a really really good opportunity and either he's taken an extra second with the puck or just not looked as decisive as he normally would and it's kind of cost him a little bit so I, I don't think he's 100 percent but maybe he's just getting better and and clearly just getting back to his normal self it just surprised me it seems that Dallas is a better matchup for him than Vancouver is when that just surprised me. He is getting more pucks on net 2.57 shots on goal per game against the Canucks four shots on goal per game against the stars. And he's had a five for in there. He's had a, a sixer in there. special teams. Very important in this series. The Oilers have now killed 41 of 44 power plays this postseason. that historic penalty kill. We've discussed including 23 straight their last power play goal allowed was in game three against the Canucks. And the first special teams goal of this series came last night when Matthias Janmark scored the game winning short handed goal. Unbelievable. I think that's that's the most surprising part of the series is and I guess of the Oilers entire playoff run. You're talking about an all time historic special teams unit. From the Edmonton Oilers, and it is not the power play. It yep. is the special teams. Uh, it is the penalty kill unit. And I, I, if I'm ascribing credit to last night's victory, number one on my list is the PK unit. Mm. And I know that they only killed what? They killed two? Uh, I, I believe that they, the Stars went 0 for 2, I and so. uh, the Oilers had one, one power play. But like they only, not super heavy lifting, but they scored a shorthanded goal. And not only did they score a shorthanded goal, right after the kill is when Knobloch deployed. And I know you love this movie. I, I love it so much. The McDavid dry sidle Hyman deployment right after a penalty kill, which is just so fucking fun. A like specialty line that only gets deployed right after a penalty kill to capitalize on momentum. That's such a fucking cool ass move. And it worked. Uh, dry sidle gets on the board, scores. And to me, like that penalty kill was the TSN turning point of the game. And I ascribe the most credit to the to the PK for uh, for both of those goals.
Yeah, it was great. And shout out Matthias Yanmark, Connor Brown. Connor Brown, man. The, so many good Connors on that team. Uh, another uh, sogless night. There were three stretches of eight plus minutes without a shot on goal for a team. Famously, the first eight minutes of the game. I said that the Oilers gave a great 52 uh, minute effort. You can guess which eight minutes I'm leaving out. The first of the game, they went eight plus minutes without a shot on goal as they fell down to nothing. Uh, they then had a, a another eight plus minutes to open the third period without a shot on goal. And then there was a stretch in the first period that, again, it started two nothing stars. There was a 10 plus minute stretch in which the stars did not have a shot on goal. Well, you, I mean, the game started, and also Stu Skinner gave up a goal on the uh, the first shot of the game. Once it's gonna again, happen. third time this playoffs. I didn't think about Stu season. Skinner at all. Stu Skinner, I thought, made no impact, good or bad, on the game last night. You know, he actually uh, he had a nice uh, breakaway save, but yeah. he, he had a couple. He had a, he, the second period, I thought he was particularly good. He had a couple really yeah, big stops I mean, in the second period. Yeah, he was. Th- that's how I'd put it. He was good. He had a yeah. I don't know nine something save percentage, uh, but I, I didn't think that he won or lost them the the game no definitely not and that's just kind of how i like my stew skinner y- yeah he's just there don't, you, you don't want him to be noticeable be an nhl goalie be a, i guess you do want him to be noticeable if he's great but be like a just just give me like a nine tennis and on the series right now jake ottinger's at 920 Stu skinner is at 900 i'll fucking take that that that's yeah. fine and again the goals that are that Stu skinner is allowing there's been, I think, one goal this series where you say, Stu, Jesus fucking Christ, what was ben that? Goal? And it was the, no, it was the Robertson. Oh, they, wait, uh, which Jamie Ben goal are you talking about? The Jamie Ben goal that opened the scoring. In uh, game uh, two? Yes. Yeah. 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 Where it just, it just, like, the puck didn't get off the ice. Right. Just, like, need a save there. And then the Robertson one. Like it banked the, off his back. Yeah. No, no, the, the one where he started to to move. There was the I think it was the game winning goal in game three. Everything. Anyway, we're getting into the point. to the minutia. But well, what do you think is the stars' mindset right now? Because a frustration that I felt when Edmonton tied it as quickly as they did was I feel like the stars aren't even worried and don't get that oh fuck we blew it kind of thought that too much every time on the clock. Other team should have all I thought when Edmonton fell down to nothing was they bet you better not fucking let the Oilers win this game. But even as the Oilers were coming back and doing it, I didn't really get a sense of the stars are fucked now and through two ga- through four games. It's two, two. Do you think the stars feel any of that? Like, God, we fucking blew it. God, we could be up three, one right now. No, I don't think so. I again, like I think the stars are pretty confident in their own ability, their depth. I think bad night, uh, but the only thing that would give me real concern if I'm the stars is Tanev and what his outlook is for the remainder of the series, the remainder of the playoffs. Like if you lose that guy for an extended period of time and McDavid and Drysdale are starting to get hot, like that's that's cause for concern. Let's spend a minute on Dar- on Darnell Nurse, who has now been on the ice for 20 even strength goals against and 23 goals against in all situations. He's on the ice for the first two against last night, that pairing with Kulak, although the first goal was Kulak's fault. He stepped up in the neutral zone where he shouldn't have. And the second one is just horrible, horrible luck. It goes, the shot is going wide. It's a wrist shot from Lindell. Goes off his ass. It beats Stu Skinner. Another one where you're like, not Stu's fault, but one where you say, how the hell did that goal happen? How cursed is Darnell Nurse right now? He then ends up setting up the Ryan McLeod goal, which is great for him. But there was so much conversation yesterday about like almost him kind of being a victim of a conversation about Darnell Nurse. The conversation that was being had about Darnell Nurse entirely fair. was just i thought how do oh, like, yeah do you do you agree though that there was something that there was like a lot of like how's darnell nurse like gonna deal with all this and i mean i, I can get the how is darnell nurse gonna deal with this but i i don't understand the discourse around like why are we piling on this guy like wh- like the media is being unfair to this dude they're in the fucking western conference final 
and their nine and a quarter million dollar defenseman, who's supposed to be one of their best defensemen, has been their biggest liability. How are we not supposed to talk about that? That's how I feel too. And I, maybe there was a degree of piling on. Maybe people who otherwise wouldn't discuss it were discussing it because they saw people doing it. But like when we talked about it, it comes from watching the games, seeing him struggling. Last night was his second own goal of the postseason. He had one in game one against the Kings as well. Even when it's not his fault, something bad is happening with him. It's just horrible luck, but it's also horrible play from a very highly compensated player. I did not get the sense that like, like it brings me no joy to be like Darnell. No, yeah, sucks of right now. But and I don't think it, like from what I've seen, like even Spectre, who I know asked the question who uh, to Skinner and McDavid and McDavid stepped up and said, you know, I'll take that question. What leadership, by the way? <laughs> oh, it hasn't been said yet. Did, did you so I'm glad it? that you pointed Sean it out. Sean and I after the show were like, one of two people who were <laughs> right. asked the question answered it. And it was the, the captain. <laughs> great. <laughs> yeah. I've seen, like, McDavid, I think, is a great leader. I'm not putting that on the highlight reel. And, like, as as dumb as Spectre can be at times, like, I don't think that that was an unfair thing to ask. Like, Nurse is catching so much heat right now, and I think deservedly so. You asked the question. And, uh, and so, you know, I, I, I just don't feel like the media has been unfairly piling on or being extraordinarily mean to Darnell Nurse. We all silly like the mayor. 